welcome to Syntax on this Monday Hasty Treat. We're going to be talking about Node and TypeScript, or should I say TypeScript in Node. How can you use TypeScript with Node or the various ways with the new stuff? Yeah. There's a lot here. So my name is Scott Tolinsky. I'm a developer from Denver. With me as always is Wes Boss. What's up? Hey, excited about TypeScript being much easier in Node now. So we're going to explain sort of what that means and and what the downsides and upsides are to this, as well as a bunch of other tools. And we'll, of course, talk about Dino and Bun as well. The implications, if you will. Uh, yes. The implications, though, of you writing code are that it's going to break. And if your code breaks, well, you need a tool like Sentry on your side to help you fix it. But more than just breaking, if your code is slow, maybe your code's stinky. Who knows? Uh, Sentry <laughs> will help with most of those things. It will not help if your your code is physically stinky. If, it, if there's code smell, it might help there. But if you want to check it out, head on over to century.io forward slash syntax. Sign up and get two months for free with the coupon code tasty treat and make better stuff. I mean, that's really the end all be all of it is that Century just really helps you, enables you to make better stuff all the time. So check it out. So you want to run TypeScript in Node. What do you do? Do you fire up TSC, create a TS config, and compile down every time you make a change? What do you do, Wes? Yes. Yeah, so Node, a couple months ago, rolled out experimental type stripping support. And in Node 23.6, so just at the time you're listening, a couple of weeks ago, they unflagged that, meaning that TypeScript can be run in Node without a flag right now. It's still considered experimental, but we're going to talk about what that means and whatnot. But this is this is pretty huge because it means a whole class of tools and how we write TypeScript may be going away, which is, is pretty exciting that it's going to be sort of a first-class citizen. It's a very so, exciting, yes. yes. Especially because, I don't know about you, but the TS config to me... As far as configs go, it's yeah. one of those ones where like I just tweak it until it works or until it does what I want it to do. I'm not <laughs> like fully versed yeah. on every single op. There is too many options and too much variety. They do too many different things. If I don't have to get into my TS config to run TypeScript code and you know not have to deal with that compilation step, then yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, Dino actually runs TypeScript as well with not have needing a TS config, which is really nice when you just yeah. want to do something very quickly. I still recommend you have a TS config for most of your projects because there's lots of good stuff in there in terms of both how it's compiled as well as different rules for your editor. So let's start with the refresher. TypeScript is JavaScript with some type information sprinkled on top. So basically, you're just adding information about the shape of your functions and your objects and your data and how things can be passed to each other. And JavaScript engines don't understand TypeScript. They understand JavaScript. So in order for a JavaScript engine, whether that is your browser with like a V8 in Chrome or uh, JavaScript core, which is what runs in Safari and Bun, before it can run that, it has to either do one of two things. It has to compile your TypeScript into JavaScript, or it has to strip the types out of your TypeScript so that it will be JavaScript. So the difference between those two is that stripping types does not do any type checking. Um, mm -hmm. It will simply take your TypeScript and it will find the parts where you added types and it will simply just take them out. In the case of Node.js, it literally replaces them with white space so that the source maps still are reflected. There's no, or there is no source maps because your TypeScript is essentially just, you, they just punch out all the holes of mm -hmm. where um, those pieces are. Compiling TypeScript is a little bit different in that once you have that tsconfig file, you can tell TypeScript several things in terms of how should it output it? Should it output it as common JS? Should it output it as 
uh, as ESM? Should it polyfill some of the features that are not available? Uh, other things it will do is what should it do with JSX that it encounters? Should it compile it to React JSX? Should it leave it alone? Should it compile it to Preact? There's a couple options that you have there. So the Node.js implementation currently of TypeScript is simply type stripping, meaning that it does not do any transformation of your code or other than simply just punching out the types and replacing them with white space. So that's exciting because yes. A, you can now just run node something.ts and it will just run that code without any intermediaries. The sort of limitations of that right now is because it's not compiling your or transforming your TypeScript, you cannot use any of the features of TypeScript that transform what your code actually looks like. So the big ones there being enums. So enums are kind of a weird one in TypeScript in where it's a, a type, it's a way to specify possible options. So you might have like an enum for uh, status, you know, uh, pending, private, published. Those convert to objects in TypeScript. And it's a bit of a weird thing. A lot of people, myself included, just say don't use don't use enums at all um, because they sort of cross the boundary of from description to actual JavaScript yeah. code. Right. It's actually being used as code. It is not a landmark. It is not a type, even though it is yeah. being used that way. I, I was pro enum for a while until I had that realization that if we are stripping the types from a file, then of course that means that's not real code, right? You cannot use mm -hmm. that. So that's really what took me on about it. You know, I, People might be wondering, if not enums, what do you use? Well, largely string literals are, are one thing that is, or even just uh, options objects. in general. Objects, right. Yeah, just an um, object or a map is, it, it, it compiles to an object. If you, right. if you write an enum, compile it, it's an object at the end of the day with a bunch of keys on it. And those keys can also have values if if you want that. So you right. can, if, if that's the case, that's just, that's just a dictionary lookup, right? And that can be an object or a map in most cases. And that's often what I'll reach for. And now that we have as const too, you can throw an as const on the end of that object and make that pretty explicit. Yeah. Generate a, a quickly generate a type for it or get a union of all the keys if you want. So yeah, it's, it's totally doable. Even like Dino will say like they have this thing called fast types and there's like rules of things you should not use. Um, and enums is is one of those. And plus, we also now have a there's a proposal for adding type stripping to the JavaScript syntax, mm -hmm. meaning that um, we eventually will, I bet, will have this idea where you can just run TypeScript files in the browser as well. And then the the JavaScript browser engine will also know how to strip types out. So if you're thinking about like future compatibility of what this looks like, try to avoid features that um, need to be compiled before they can be used. So enums is probably the big one. Namespace, legacy module, and parameter properties is also another really big one. So parameter properties in TypeScript allow you to um, initialize a class property in the constructor rather than having in your class, rather than having to specify the property inside of the class. Okay. Because Otherwise, what you're doing when you construct a class, your constructor is full of these, this dot name equals right. name, this dot age equals age, et cetera, et cetera. And you have all these like annoying settings. So TypeScript allows you to set both whether it's a, a public or private property, as well as the type directly in the constructor. And then when you pass the value, it'll immediately get set on the class. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably the one that I'm a bit bummed. But I'm I'm gonna say there also is work being done on Node.js uh, called experimental transform types. So it's not that this will be this way forever, but they are working on a loader so that you will be able to use all of these features in your Node.js, which is is great because like if we have this thing where it's like oh great we have it, but 
you can't use any of these features. It's mm -hmm. always a bit of a bummer, and then people just go and use the other the features. You know, like it's don't make it like like watered down. Give us all the features because at the end of the day, people are going to need these features. Yes. Um, the other yeah. kind of gotcha is, and we've talked about this in the past, is you have to import types with the type keyword. Mm -hmm. And I've, I think I've on the gone on the podcast saying I've, I don't see any reason why you would need to use the type keyword. Mm. And the way that this works is, if you're importing a type from a file, you can just import it just like you were importing a, any other export that's a variable or a function. But the other way to do it in TypeScript is you say import type podcast, and that's the the type of podcast. So if you want to use this with Node.js, you have to use the type keyword. I've always used the type keyword. And from my perspective, especially if you are having types that cross the server client boundary, yeah. That's when I've gotten into issues yeah. where server code is leaking into my client code without using the type annotation there in the import. So I've always used it. So I've I've always been in the case that don't use it, but I have mm. been confused a few times when I'm importing something with a capital on it. Is that a class or yeah. is that a type or is it both? Uh, it's so, explicit. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can I could I could see that. So that's the sort of upsides and downsides to Node.js. There's no need for source maps. Um, part of why I kind of like this whole stri type stripping is you're not introducing a, a build step in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. The code you write is the code that is run pretty much. Uh, there's no need for source maps. So you're not getting some weird stack traces that don't make sense to you at all. One thing is they have on the website is they say is not for dependencies. Um, so to discourage package authors from publishing packages written in TypeScript, mm -hmm. Node will by default refuse to handle TypeScript files inside of folders under a Node modules path. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I kind of, but also I'm so sick of having to debug compiled JavaScript where I was all this babble crap and all these like it's compiled to ES5 and like I just want to I want to run the code as it was authored. And I know that might be a pipe dream that will never hit, but wouldn't it be nice? Oh, yeah. No, I 100% agree <laughs> with you. I would just be concerned for, you know, people on older versions of Node. They install something. I guess you'd, you'd also publish the compiled versions as well. And then, you know, if you're yeah. in a TypeScript now you're, environment. Now you're publishing yeah. the TypeScript the ESM, the common JS, the types. Trust me, it, my dream <laughs> would just be yeah, you just use the file that's authored and it just imports and works and there's no yeah. compilation. Yeah, that's that's my dream as well. But I, I, that again, it's it's not a standard, so we get it. Um, yes. Because like what happens when we move on from TypeScript what? and we want the what? new version, you know? What? So <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll see about that. Other tools. So that's Node, um, Node 23. You can start using it today. Obviously, it's still experimental. It's going to throw a, a little warning in your console when you run it. I think in, in a couple of months or whatever, we'll start to see, especially once the transformation part comes. If you're not using that, um, if you want to... like I, I personally have a Node.js TypeScript course platform. I use TSX. So TSX is not the same thing as TSX, which is for JSX in TypeScript. TSX means TypeScript execute, and you can use it in place of Node, meaning that you just say TSX, your app.ts, and it will do the transpilation and everything for you. And in my experience, this works flawlessly. I don't even, mm. when I deploy my code to production, I don't even compile it. I simply just run TSX in production and it it runs it and it works really well. It passes all the like one thing about using like Nodemon and, and all these other tools is you have to figure out how do you pass all these arguments to the node process. Mm -hmm. TSX does a fantastic job of passing the command line flags that are not for it just mm. to the node process that is needed. So big fan of that. Yeah. Have you used any others? Uh, yeah, I've used TS node, which is a, a fairly popular one for basically doing exactly uh, just running TypeScript yep. 
as nodes. It's way um, more popular than TSX, like five yes, times way more, more popular. That's the only one that I've used. I've also done straight up JS doc style typing where you're writing comments for your types instead of mm-hmm. writing .ts files, you're writing .js files. I think JS doc is a very, very uh, reasonable solution to some of this stuff. Totally. Uh, that said, I still still mostly opt to writing .ts files 99% of the time. JS doc is awesome. If you have an app that's not in TypeScript, you can just start writing JS doc because VS Code will still consume. Yes. Like a lot of people don't know this, but VS Code is built on top of TypeScript. That's <laughs> that's why VS Code is so good at JavaScript because it it still even if you have a JavaScript project, it still runs everything through the TypeScript with allow JS turned on. And if you just start adding JS doc to a lot of your functions, you know, all of a sudden you have some nice types. And that's a great way to sort of move to TypeScript without having yeah. to do a big rename of all your files. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I like JS doc for more than just the TypeScript features, I like that you can like mark functions as deprecated and uh, give a little context to things yeah. here and there, write a description. I, type an error. You, you can One thing TypeScript can't do is you can't type what a function throws. So yeah. you have no idea what, when you catch an error from a function, you have no idea what the shape of that thing is. And you have to sort of narrow it down inside of TypeScript. I really wish you could do that. You also can't type an entire function. With yes. Straight, yeah, where with JS doc, you can type yeah, stick the inputs in and outputs of a function with one one fell swoop, which is nice. Yeah, you're right. Let's talk about Dino and Bun. Um, so Dino and Bun obviously have TypeScript built in as a first class citizen, and I think are largely responsible for Node getting this, which is really exciting. And Dino and Bun's implementation are really good. Uh, they also have JSX support, which is something that Node will not do with TypeScript because when you have JSX, TypeScript needs to understand what to do with it. Um, and you can, like I said earlier, you can tell it to compile it to React, you can tell it to compile it to Preact, you can tell it to leave it alone. There's a bunch of different options there. So Dino and Bun having JSX built in as a first class citizen is really nice, especially if you're just trying to mock up some templates real quick. I love it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then just like Bun has a whole bunch of nice niceties around JSX and TypeScript for logging and displaying your your components and whatnot. Word. Well yes. uh, do you have anything else here? Because I love where we're at with this world compared to where we were at five years ago, even two years ago, one year mm-hmm. ago in TypeScript. It does feel like there are less foot guns. There's less in the way of just getting going. And to me, that's great for all accounts. Totally. Yeah, it's it's not like a thing anymore where you need to like literally run a Webpack watcher and compile and then your node process watches the output and restarts itself. And uh, thankfully, that stuff is, is a thing of the past. And every single tool I've used in the last year or two, just TypeScript first class support. Right. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. We will catch you later. Peace. Peace.